All right, Math 30-2, today we're going to do Perms and Comms Lesson 7. It's the last lesson in this unit, Problem Solving with Permutations and Combinations. Let's do a quick review. Recall the following formulas from earlier lessons. The fundamental accounting principle states the number of ways to select is number of ways to select option A, and then multiply that by number of ways to select option B, and multiply that by number of ways to select option C, and so on and so on. Factorial notation tells us that n factorial can be written as n times 1 less than n times 2 less than n times 3 less than n times dot 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 all the way down to factorial notation will always finish with times 3 times 2 times 1. Remember n must always be a whole number. Third thing we learned was the number of permutations of r objects or uh, r objects taking from n at a time is n permutations of r equals n factorial over n minus r factorial. That is on your formula sheet, so you don't have to memorize that. You do have to know how to use it. Permutations with repetitions, well, without any restrictions, it would be n factorial or n permutations of n. But as soon as you have repetitions, we're going to divide out the number of repetitions as factorials. So you divide out the number of repetitions of A as A factorial, the number of repetitions of B as B factorial, the number of repetitions of C as C factorial, and so on and so on. And that, I don't believe, is on your formula sheet. Number of combinations of R taken from N at a time is N combinations of R. It can be written using parentheses or N factorial over N minus R factorial, R factorial. Again, that one is on your formula sheet. You have to know how to use it, but you do not have to memorize that formula. Problem solving is essentially determine whether order is important or not. That's the most important thing in this. Is order a big deal? Example one. How many arrangements of the words of the word poppies can be made under each of the following conditions? A without any restrictions. So without any restrictions, there are two, four, seven letters, so that's seven factorial. However, I notice there's also three pop, three P's in this, so I'm going to divide out my like elements. So seven factorial divided by three factorial. You do that, you get seven times six times five times four, or 840. How about how many arrangements are there if the arrangements begin with a P? So if the arrangements begin with a P, how many choices do I have for a P there? Well, I've got three P's in this situation. All right, three different P's. So any one of those three can go there. And then I've got six letters left. How many ways can I arrange those six letters? Well, that's six factorial ways. And now, sorry, three. So that's beginning with a P and then having the six other letters after it. And I want to divide out the like elements. So again, all those P's are the same, so I have to divide out a 3 factorial. So 3 times 6 factorial over 3 factorial gives us 360 ways. How about part C? If the first two letters are P, so if we're talking about the first two letters now, the first letter could be a P, there's three of those. The second letter could be a P, there's two of those. And now I've got five letters left over. So that's five factorial ways to put the other five letters. And now divide out the like elements. Well, there's three P, so I divide out by three factorial. So three times two times five factorial divided by three factorial gives us 120 options. And D, if all the P's stay together, doesn't matter where they are. So I've got my grouping of three P's, right? Plus I have four other letters, O, I, E, and S. So this grouping of three P's, if I had any three letters, I would say I could f organize those three factorial ways. And then I've got four letters, O, I, E, S, plus the group of P's. So I would multiply by 
five elements to arrange, five factorial ways. And I still have three p's which are alike, so I'm going to divide out the three like elements. So we can notice that there's really only one way to have the three p's in that order because they're all the same. So three factorial divided by three factorial. We could have just said there's five factorial ways. This grouping plus the other four letters. You can't really arrange the three p's in any other way because they're all the same. So that's the long way. You could recognize that and just write that as 5 factorial. That's also 120 ways. Part E, if the first letter is a P and the next one is not a P. So the first letter is a P. Well, I've got three P's to choose. The next letter is not a P. Well, there are four P, four not P's, O, I, E, and S. So I've got four choices for the next letter. I've now chosen one P and one not P, so I've got five letters left, and they can be arranged in five factorial ways. Now let's take out the like elements. So we divide by the three P's, three factorial, because they're all the same. So three times four times five factorial divided by three factorial. That gives us 240 ways. All right. Excellent. Let's try example two. A class consists of five girls and seven boys. A committee is to be formed consisting of two girls and three boys. Determine the number of ways a teacher can choose the committee if A, there are no further restrictions. So we've got five girls. I want a committee with two of those. We've got seven boys. I want a committee with three of those. So if we're talking about no further restrictions, I've got five girls. I need two of them. It's a committee, so order is not important. And I have also have seven boys. Order is not important. I need three of those. And because it's the same committee, I'm going to multiply these together. So five combinations of two times seven combinations of three. Well, five combinations of two is ten. Multiply that by... Seven combinations of three, which is 35. And we get our solution. 10 times 35 is 350. Nice. Part B. Johnny, the principal son, has to be on the committee. So the principal son must be there. So... Johnny's the principal's son. I must choose him. That has to happen. All right. I still have five girls to choose from, and I still need two of them. So multiply that by five combinations of two. And I now have six boys left because I already chose Johnny, the principal's son. And I'm supposed to have three boys on the committee, but Johnny's son's already on there, so I'm down to two boys, two more boys that I need. So, 1 choose 1 times 5 choose 2 times 6 choose 2. Well, 1 choose 1 is 1. Multiply that by 5 choose 2, which is 10. Multiply that by 6 choose 2, which is 15. And we get a total of 150 ways to have a two-girl, three-boy committee if Johnny must be on it. Part C, the twins, Peter and Paul, cannot both be on the committee. So how could we do this? Peter and Paul can't both be on the committee. So let's write this out. We could have Peter on the committee. So Peter only. Or... We could have Paul only, or, is there another or? Yeah, they could both not be on the committee, so neither on the committee. So we could do it like that. So let's try this. How many ways can we have Peter only on the committee? Well, it's kind of like having Johnny the principal's son on there, right? Um... Peter must be there. One combination of one. 
And now we need two girls. So five combinations of two. And we need two more boys. But we can't have Paul on there. So there were seven boys. We've already chosen Peter, so he's gone. But we can't have Paul. So we're down to five boys to choose from. We need two more. So that's only having Peter on there. Or only having Paul on there. Well, Paul must be there. So there's one Paul. We need him. There's five girls still. We need two girls in the committee. And I can't choose Paul. He's already been chosen. And Peter can't be on there. So I'm down to five boys. I need two more of those. Or neither of them on the committee. So I've got Peter and Paul. I don't want to choose either of them. So you could say two combinations of zero. We don't want either of those two. I've got five girls. I still need two girls. And of the seven boys, I can't have Peter or Paul, so I'm down to five boys, and I need three of them. So there would be this question written out in combination notation. Now let's figure it out. One choose one is one. Five combinations of two is ten times ten. Add one combination of one is one. Five combinations of two is ten times ten. And finally... Two combinations of zero is one. Five combinations of two is ten. Five combinations of three is ten. So we get a hundred plus a hundred plus a hundred. Three hundred possible ways that the twins, Peter and Paul, cannot both be on the committee. Interesting. Now, that's not the only way to do this question. All right. We'd like to see another method. Let's watch this. We could have went the number of ways we want Peter and Paul, but not both Peter or Paul. But not both would be number of committees that have no restrictions. subtract the number of committees that have the complement of having Peter or Paul. What's the complement of having Peter or Paul on the committee? Well, the complement would be having both Peter and Paul. So we could have done it that way. So how many um, committees are there with no restrictions? Well, we did that. We said there's five girls, we need two, and there's seven boys, we need three. Subtract the number of committees that have both Peter and Paul on that. So we've got Peter and Paul, we must choose both of them. I've got five girls, we need two girls. And we've chosen Peter and Paul, so I've only got five boys left, we need one more boy. All right, so five choose two times seven choose three, we've done that one already, that's 350 ways no restrictions. Subtract 2 choose 2. Well, that's one way to do that. 5 choose 2 is 10, and 5 choose 1 is 5. So 350 subtract 50. 1 times 10 times 5 gives us 300 ways Peter or Paul could be on the committee. So if you prefer using the complement, that's another method to do example 2 part C. All right. Great. Same answer, 300. Use the following information to answer the next class example. David, Stephen, and Helen are trying to answer the following homework question. The students in a school band have pre, uh, practiced five popular and six classical music compositions. For the school concert, they will choose a program consisting of three popular and two classical musical compositions. If the order of the compositions matters, determine the number of different programs which can be presented. The students' answers are shown below. David said, well, that would be 11 permutations of 5. Uh, Stephen said that would be 5 permutations of 3 multiplied by 6 permutations of 2. And Helen said 5 combinations of 3 multiplied by 6 combinations of 2. Each student is convinced their answer is correct and asks their teacher to check the work. The teacher asks the students to write their answers on the board and asks the class to discuss the merits of each answer. If possible, discuss the merits of each answer with other students. Indicate errors 
you see in any of David's or Stephen's or Helen's reasoning. All right, well, you can't really ask your other students, other classmates, but you can think about this a little bit on your own. So what do we see? We see there are five popular, and we need to choose three. There are six classical, and we need to choose two. And then it tells us the order of the composition matters. So there has to be something dealing with permutations in here because order matters. That tells us that. So David's trying to say with 11 permutations of five, well, there's 11 songs, five popular, six classical, and we need to choose five of them, three popular, two classical, and it's permutations because order matters. So you can understand where David's coming from. He has the permutations in there, all right? But I don't think you can just ignore the fact that we only want three popular and two classical. So just saying 11 perms of five isn't going to cut it. Stephen recognizes that permutations are important. And he says, well, there are five popular. We need three of those. And there are six classical. We need two of those. So he's trying to deal with the idea that we're not going to have all maybe five populars and no classical or five classicals and no popular. So he's dealing with that and he's dealing with permutations. So that looks like it might be more correct than David. Helen is saying, no, choosing songs, three popular out of the five, doesn't matter how you choose those. And six classical, choosing two of those, order doesn't matter for that. That seems to make sense. That's consistent with what we've been doing. But the problem with Helen's, it seems she doesn't take into account that order is important. So from what I see here, I would say that none of these students have the correct answer. They all have something that makes sense, all right? Here's how I'd put it into words, if you want to read through it. So David uses permutations because order is important, but he does not deal with the restrictions of the three popular and the two classical. Stephen assumes that the three popular and two classical must be played consecutively, trying to deal with the idea of, of order is important. And Helen correctly determines the number of selections of three popular and two classical, but she does not deal with the arrangement of these five songs so she fails to deal with the importance of order all right so part b the teacher indicated that all three students had given an incorrect answer what is the correct solution well if you go back and read what you wrote for helen she seemed to have done a lot of the work correctly she said we've got five popular and we need to choose three choosing three doesn't really matter the order we choose them and then she said we had uh, six classical, we must choose two of those. That's correct. That's the number of solutions, uh, sorry, selections of the music. Now, how do we deal with the arrangement? Well, we now have five songs, three and two. We've now chosen five songs. Didn't matter how we chose those five songs, but now order is important. How do we arrange those five songs in five factorial ways? All right. So once we choose the five songs, we need three um, popular and two classical. Now that I've chosen those, and it didn't matter how I chose those, order wasn't important there. Now it's important how I'm going to arrange those five songs. So this is the correct solution. Three cho five choose three times six choose two times five factorial. So there's 18,000 different possibilities. All right. And great. Put a star beside that one. That's kind of the last big thing to look at. Okay, so you guys have your assignment. Let's get after it.